requests from the community. So what prayers do you bring today? Norma. Norma. Betty. Betty, thank you. The Harding family. Say that one again. The Harding family. Harding family. You say Lyle and family? Frank and Jean. Frank and Jean. Any others? The McCoy family. Say that one again. The McCoy, McCoy family, yes. <laughs> the Karen family as well. Any others? Pray for good health with all these coughs in the congregation. <laughs> okay, so I'll carry these prayers through our time of worship today, and I'll carry them with me through this week. We light this candle as a reminder of God's constant presence with us. Before the suns and the stars, the light of God shone across creation. And that same light sh has shined in and through creation across the millennia. Even in our darkest days, we carry this light. May it show us the way. Now I invite you for you to uh, rise in body or in spirit as we sing together our gathering music, This Is The Day. We'll sing it through twice. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. This is the day that God has made. We will rejoice and be glad. Sing it, Hallelujah! Sing it, Hallelujah! Sing it, Hallelujah! We will rejoice and be glad. Or 
through e-transfer. Just make sure you let us know which you're voting for. Uh, I'm on leave this week to prepare for uh, the Advent season, so if there are pastoral emergencies, please reach out to Reverend Brian or Reverend Kay. Speaking of the Advent season, you may have seen in the entryway uh, or in your announcements the Advent questionnaire. I encourage you to fill them out either online or the hard copies out there on the table. Uh, the sooner we get feedback, the sooner we can shape the Advent worship experiences. Uh, tickets for Laughing All the Way, uh, a Christmas comedy, and Carol's Experience will be available in the entryway following worship today. That event takes place on November 30th, 7 to 9 p.m. And it's a family-friendly event, so I encourage you to be uh, present for that. Our Christmas Bazaar is this coming Saturday, the 18th of November, from 9 until noon. And next Sunday, no, this Sunday, not next Sunday, this Sunday, this evening, uh, the youth group gathers at 6.30 right here, right here. Uh, that's any youth grades, five and up, are invited to come and join in Christmas crafts, games, and snacks. Those are the announcements that I have. Are there any birthdays? No birthdays. All right. Okay, well then, let us uh, join together in our call to worship as we call one another into this time. We are here... Because God was there in the pre-dawn light of creation. We are here because that light is to shine in us. We have come together because in one another we glimpse God's image. We have come together because each of us is a part of the body of Christ. We enter into this time seeking the embrace of the holy. We enter into this time for worship and grace. Let us pray. God of creative love, before time was time, you spoke all that was, is, and will yet be into being out of a deep yearning for connection. Through the eons you have walked with creation, walked with your people, as we have stumbled along to find our way. You have called out to us. You have reached out for us. You have ever been present with us. Send your spirit into this time and bless what we do here as we lift our thanks and praise to you for your never-ending love. We offer this in all our prayers in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our constant companion. Amen. And now I invite you once again to rise in body or in spirit as we sing together, Come In, Come In and Sit Down, Voices United 395.
amazing how we are forgiven for all those times where we stumble along life's way. And so I invite us now to join in our prayer of confession, offering up those times when we stumble, when we fail to act, when we don't live into the call we've been given. Let's pray together. Embracing God, we know you have been calling out to us. We've heard your voice. We know that you have been reaching out to us. We have felt your touch. Forgive us those times where we have ignored your voice, listening instead to the calls of the world of individuals. Forgive us those times when we have shrugged off your touch, insisting on going our own way. Forgive us and call to us again. Reach for us again. Guide us on the way again. We offer this and all our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our partner on the way. Amen. The good news of God's great love is that no matter how many times we turn away, God is before us with arms open wide to welcome us home. Thanks be to God for such a love as this. Amen. And now, as, we, as that love is revealed to us in so many ways in our lives, I invite you to rise in body uh, or in spirit again as we offer together a new creed. <coughs> we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is created, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. <coughs> now as we let that faith take root in our hearts, let us sit and let the spirit and the music flow over.
join me. Oof. Hey, Jakey, how you doing? Good. Hello, how are you doing? You good? That's good. So, have you all ever tried something that was too hard for you to do? Yeah? What, what did you do when it was too hard? Yeah? That's a really good example. Yeah? You either quit or kept going. Did you quit when you couldn't, when you, when you had trouble? No? <coughs> what? You did? Scooters are a lot of fun. But you didn't quit, right? And sometimes you do quit, right? Sometimes. Sometimes things are just too hard, right? Sometimes we get too frustrated. And sometimes we just give up. And that doesn't mean that we're bad people, right? Yeah? Swimming's another really hard thing. I wouldn't give up on trying to learn how to swim, especially not in the middle, because you're in the water, right? But sometimes we give up when we get frustrated. Sometimes we give up when things seem too hard and there's not someone around to help, right? Do you think that God gives up when things get frustrating? No? <clears throat> Do you think that God walks away when things get hard? Do you think that God leaves us alone when we stop listening? Do you think that God stops calling us when we do this? What? What? Oh, because, yeah, that's, that's just it. God doesn't give up on us. And again, it's not to say that we aren't good enough because sometimes we find things too hard and we give up. But it reminds us that God is just that much more in love with who we are. God loves us so deeply that God's never going to give us up. God's never going to let us go. Right? Because God loves us that much. Right? Even when we frustrate God. Have you ever frustrated your parents? <laughs> you, your parents ever just gone, Ugh. No? Oh, the patience of some parents. Ah, oh, you're nodding because you know. Sometimes parents, we get frustrated, right? But do we give up on our kids? No. No. No, no, is what I'm saying to you and, and Jacob. I'm never going to give up on you two. And that's how God is with us. We're like all God's children. What? I'm their dad. I know, right? I look nothing like them. I've got a beard and they don't. <laughs> right? But just like we wouldn't give up on our kids, God never gives up on us. God is always there even when we're learning to walk or drive our bike or trying to swim and with us when we stumble and fall. There to pick us up in the end, right? And to call us even when we aren't listening, when we do the thing that God told us not to do or that our parents told us not to do, right? Right. God's always there with us, just like our parents are always there with us. Do you think we can pray before we go off to Sunday school? Okay, repeat after me, okay? Dear God, help us, your children, to hear your voice, to feel your touch, and to see the way before us. Guide us always, we pray. Amen. Hey, you all go off and have fun with Rena in Sunday school, and we'll see you later. And now, as we approach our Holy Scriptures, uh, let us join together in singing our song prayer of illumination. I invite you to remain seated for this.
And now I'm going to invite Darlene forward to offer our scripture readings for today. Good morning. The Chelsea Bible reading is taken from Mark chapter 10, verses 13 to 14. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. For it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. And from Hosea 11, verses 1 through 9. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt I called my son. The more I called them, the more they went from me. They kept sacrificing to the Baals, and offering incense to idols. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. They shall return to the land of Egypt, and Assyria shall be their king, because they have refused to return to me. The sword rages in their cities. It consumes their oracle priests and devours because of their schemes. My people are bent on turning away from me. To the Most High they call but he does not raise them up at all. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, O Israel? How can I make you like Adma? How can I treat you like Zeboim? My heart recoils within me. My compassion grows warm and tender. I will not execute my fierce anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim. For I am God and no mortal, the Holy One in your midst, and I will not come in wrath. May God help us to apply these words to our daily lives. Thank you, Darlene. And now we're going to join our voices as we rise in body or in spirit. Uh, this one might be new. It's Spirit God Be Our Breath. The choir is going to sing through the first verse themselves, and then we're all going to do the first verse and the rest of them together. Thank you. 
Let us pray. You yearn for us, O God. In the words of your prophet Hosea, we hear of your deep love and deep longing for communion with your people. Help us to hear your declaration of love, your promise of grace, and your determination to never let us go, to never leave us behind. May these words take root in our heart and turn us again towards your ever open arms. Hear our prayers this day as we lift them to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your love and your word incarnate. Amen. Since we began this journey back in September, we've been fo focusing a lot on the things that God does and the responses of the people. Over and over again, we have seen that relationship grow. We've seen it crack in places. We've seen it grow again and then crumble and then reform. And more often than not, we've seen the ways that the people have turned from God, choosing to go their own way, despite the love that they've been shown by their Creator. As we've heard these stories, if we're being really honest with ourselves, we can see our own faces reflected in the scriptures, in the ways that the people ignore God's call at best, or at worst, act directly against the directions of the divine that have come through the prophets. We've also seen across the history of God's people that many are the times that the people are divided or at war or in exile, and in the hearing of these stories, we Shout at this holy book. Why, God? Why, if you love your people, do you do this? But if we read closely our holy word, we will see that rare is the occasion when God wrathfully acts to the detriment of the people. It happens, there's no denying that, but it is rare. Indeed, God sends prophets to warn the people that the path that they are on leads to struggle, to strife, to suffering. But the people do not listen and continue on the way of their own choosing. It would be like you walking down the road and you came to a fork in the road. Now, every time you came to a fork before this, you turned left. It seemed okay. But here, there's a sign that says, rough road to the left. Ignoring that warning, you walk in anyway, and you cry out, Why wasn't I given a sign? It is because of the many times where the people seem to walk themselves off a cliff that we have an image of God in the Hebrew Scriptures as wrathful, as angry, as vengeful. And that image doesn't reflect the God that we've come to know in our brother and our Savior, Jesus Christ the literal personification of love, patience, and grace. But again, the God of the Hebrew Scriptures and the God of the Greek Scriptures are one and the same, and we see the truth of that in the reading today from the prophet Hosea. In the passage that Darlene just read, the focus and the tone have changed drastically from what we've been used to. Rather than following the exploits of the people of Israel as they respond in their way to the actions and promises of God, we are treated to a scene of emotional turmoil, of distress, of determination, and ultimately, of love. Though the words are Hosea's, we can hear the God that we know the God we might recognize in the words and actions of Jesus Christ, the God who loves us despite us not returning that love, the God who longs to embrace us even when we turn from that embrace. Through Hosea, God recounts the ways that God has been present with the people in the same way that a parent might talk about being there for their child. God was there as the people took their first unsteady steps and had taken them up into God's own arms when they stumbled and fell. God was there to guide and to support 
working through priests, prophets, and kings, even when the people chose to go their own way, ignoring that wise counsel. And just like any parent whose child is defiant, we can see God frustrated. And yet there is conflict within God. It would be like a parent telling a child that something is hot only for the child to touch the thing and burn their hand anyway. A part of the parent, a silent part, is saying in their mind, I told you so! But their heart reacts. And instead, care and love are offered. We see that same tension in God's own words. Israel has made their choices, has walked the road of their own choosing, and they're struggling with the consequences over and over again. My heart recoils within me, God says. God says this as compassion replaces frustration. And we hear the depths of God's love for Israel and for us in the words that follow. How can I give you up? How can I hand you over? This is why our sacred book is filled with so many stories. Because no matter how often we turn from God, God will not give us up as a lost cause. No matter how many bad choices we make, God will not hand us over to live only in the consequences, but will always come to embrace us in love. And more than not letting us go to wander the world alone, more than not leaving us to struggle on our own, God is not done with us yet. What does that mean, God's not done with us yet? It means that we are still being shaped by creation and by the Spirit. It means that we have within us gifts that we might not even know about, but God does. It means even when we think we have done our part, even when we think we are too small, too tired, too young, too old, even when we think we have reached the end of what we can give or do, God is not done with us yet. Now on the one hand, that's really encouraging because it means that no matter what, God will always be there for us. will be beside us, within us, behind us, and before us. And that certainty of that holy presence feels good. On the other hand, it means that God will always be there beside us, encouraging us to take that next step into the unknown. God will always be within us, calling us to act when all we want to do is rest. God will always be behind us, pushing us to move forward when all we want to do is go back to what's familiar. And God will always be ahead of us, calling from beyond what is and inviting us to join in the creative work of what might yet be. Basically, it means that as long as we draw breath, God will not give up on us, God will not leave us alone, because God is not done working in and through us for the unfolding of creation. And we need to hear that message as individuals. We need to hear it because it reminds us that small as we might feel, small as we might actually be in the grand scheme of the universe, God is and has been a constant presence in our lives, laughing with us through our joys, weeping with us in our sorrows, seeking us when we are lost. It tells us that we are so precious to God that no matter how far we wander, even when we say that we have given up on God, God has not given up on us. And will always be calling to us because each of us, because all of us, are precious to God. It also means that as small as we feel or as small as we might actually be in the majesty of creation, we have a part to play in revealing God's love, in building God's kingdom because God is not done with us Yet, this also reminds us that just as much we need to hear this message as churches, as communities of faith. Because we can feel as a community of faith that we're low on energy, 
that we're running out of holy breath. We can even worry that our church and others are dying, or worse, have already died, and just don't have the good sense to lay down. What can we possibly do as a church? How can we, weary and worn as we are, hope to find new life, let alone be integral in the creative work in which, to which we have been called as followers of Christ? But then we hear God's questions to God's self. How can I give you up? How can I hand you over? How can I let you go? The answer to these questions, whether talking about us as individuals or us as a church, is that God can't. The answer is that nothing, not weariness, not waywardness, nor even death itself, can keep God from doing something amazing and wonderful in this world and through us. We are a people born of a holy breath inspired by an empty tomb and empowered by the blessing of God's unwillingness to let us go. Even when we feel like we've given all we can, God reminds us that as long as we draw breath, we can be a part of building something beautiful or sharing something amazing. So never let anyone, even if it's the person in the mirror, Tell you that as an individual or as a church, you're too old, too tired, too small, or too lost. Never let anyone, especially the person in the mirror, tell you that you don't have what God needs. Because you are filled with holy breath. You are gifted with the blessed task of sharing the good news of God's great love. Because you have a blessed companion in Christ, who is with you every step of the way. You have what God needs, and God is not done with you yet. Let us pray. Breathe on us, O oh God, when we are weary, when we are worn, when we feel like we've reached the end of our rope, when we aren't sure what lies before us. Breathe on us, O oh God, give us life, and inspire us to live into your call. <laughs> Amen. And now, let us join our voices once again as we rise in body or in spirit and sing, I was there to hear your morning cry. Voices United, 644. <laughs>
for, you know, times of baptism, but it is a good reminder of God's constant presence in our lives. And now we turn to our mission and service story, and I'm going to invite Darlene forward again. There is one thing that will never fail us, compassion. Acts of compassion, both big and small, give rise to peace. Although we wish we could, we cannot wave a magic wand and bring about world peace. But with every act of compassion, we harness the power of love, the same love Jesus lived and died for, and that he promised would move mountains at a time when it feels like there's a new crisis confronting us each and every day, it's reassuring to know that mission and service partners provide real-time relief around the world on a daily basis. That's why your generosity matters so much. The food security initiatives, refugee support work, educational programs, and emergency and advocacy efforts, your gifts through mission and service support aren't just about food, safety, education, and human rights. They are ultimately about compassion, peace, hope, and in a world where division tears the fabric that binds us together, that's everything. Jesus put compassion into action every day he lived. He brought hope into every room he walked into. He was literally the calm in the storm. He stretched out his arms in the ultimate sacrifice of love, and the world was never the same. Every act of compassion contributes to a more peaceful world. Thank you for your generosity through mission and service. Your gifts truly do, truly do help move mountains. Thank you for that reminder of how our gifts to the mission and service go out into the world. Uh, and also a reminder to be more keenly aware of the gifts that each one of us has to share right here within our own community of faith. Particularly uh, Maureen's gift of being able to choose some awesome pictures for today. Uh, it, they were just perfect because the whole theme about God being with us like a parent, well. Uh, anyway, uh, now let us seek God's blessing on all that we do. Uh, all that we give as well. Let's sing together our dedication verse, and you can remain seated for that. Okay. Let us breathe in God's holy breath. 
Let us breathe out our fear and doubt. We, O oh God, are a people born of a miracle, <coughs> redeemed by an empty tomb and sustained by your holy breath. Send that breath into our world, we pray. To people who have struggled against oppression, prejudice, and the many isms and phobias that pollute our society, racism, xenophobia, sexism, homophobia, elitism, to those people who struggle and strive against these and so many other abuses, we pray that you give revitalizing breath, a breath that gives new drive and purpose to their strife. Breathe also into the oppressors, the purveyors of prejudice, and give a new perspective on the world, a perspective based on your love as lived out in Jesus Christ. As we lift to you, O oh God, the wounded world, we pray that you bring healing and hope. And so we breathe in God's holy breath. We breathe out our fear and doubt. We pray for our congregation, O oh God, and for all communities of faith that are striving to live faithfully the call that you have given them. When we look around our communities of faith, we are worried we might not have what you need. Shake us free from this baseless doubt and remind us that we are exactly the people that you need to share your boundless love. Inspire us to reach beyond these walls to embrace your children. Encourage us to seek a deeper unity in you as we build your kingdom of love right here in this place. As we lift to you, O oh God, this and other congregations, we pray that you will shine your light on the way before us all. So we breathe in God's holy breath and breathe out our fear and doubt. Now, with hearts weary from worry, we lift to you those people and situations in need of the movement of your spirit to bring new life and new hope. We pray, O oh God, for Norma. We pray today for Betty. We pray for the Harding family. We pray for Lila family. Pray today for Frank and Jean. We pray for the McCoy and the Karen families. We pray for the health and well being of your children in this place and beyond these walls. We pray for those who are on journeys of recovery or treatment. We pray for those who are waiting for answers. We pray for your children who have been lost along the way. Guide us that we might find and embrace them. We pray for all of your children who feel that they aren't worthy of love. Help us to remind each one that we are precious to you. Now, O oh God, we lift to you those silent prayers of our hearts, prayers too deep for words, <coughs> prayers that you hear all the same. So we breathe in God's holy breath and breathe out our fear and doubt. These are the prayers. 
prayers of your people, O God. Prayers spoken and unspoken, we bind them together in the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, as we have heard and prayed about God's amazing love, let us sing about that love. As we join our voices in singing, Come, let us sing of a wonderful love, Voices United 574. Please rise in body or in spirit. Now let's sing our closing music, Walk With Me. 